message, the kingdom of God is at hand, and the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is defined as where God rules and reigns like he wants to. That includes that the Holy Spirit can do what he wants to. Now the scriptures tell us very plainly that Jesus is the exact representation of the Father. We read all through the Gospel of John. For example, in John, I believe it's 14 or so, that Philip says to Jesus, this is the, end, this is the night after the night of the Last Supper, and Jesus is knowing he's going to die on the cross soon. Philip says to him, and if you take a look at it, in John chapter 14, Philip says to him in verse 8, actually it starts off with 5, Thomas says unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, you have known my Father. Also, from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Now Jesus is making an absolute declaration. He says, now you've seen the Father, now you know the Father. And then Philip turps up with, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Here Jesus just declares, you've seen the Father, right? And Philip says, we haven't seen the Father yet. We don't know what you're talking about, the Father. What's going on, Lord? And Jesus says, and you can almost hear a level of exasperation in him. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long with you, and hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou, show us the Father? This is a disappointment on Jesus' part. Here the disciples have been with him for three and a half years or so, and Jesus is, trying to dis is displaying that he is the, the one from God, the messenger from God, the Father, who he portrays as the Father. Prior to that, no prophet had ever spent all that kind of time and language of Jesus displaying the fatherhood of God, the loving Father of God. And Philip goes, show us the Father. Like he's waiting for another thing to occur so he can see the Father. And Jesus says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. So he's saying every miracle that Jesus did was Father God doing the miracles through Jesus. So as a man, Jesus himself wasn't doing the miracles. He knew the Father was doing the miracles through him. Remember we went to John chapter 11 at, the, at Lazarus, at the tomb of Lazarus. Jesus says, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. And then he tells Lazarus to come forth. Okay? He knew that God, the Father, was going to be the one through the Holy Spirit to raise Lazarus from the dead. It wasn't Jesus himself providing the life and the power that raised Lazarus from the dead. It was Father God through the Holy Spirit that did it. Okay? We also see examples in the New Testament where Jesus, remember the story of the woman with the issue of blood. She said, if I but touch his garment, I shall be healed. And she touches his garment, and, he gets, and she gets healed, and Jesus goes, who touched me? And the apostles go, there's people all around you, they're in a crowd. And Jesus says, who touched me? And he says, there's people bumping into you all over the place, Jesus. What do you mean, who touched you? And Jesus goes, hey, somebody touched me. I felt the power of God go out of me. Somebody really touched me. They didn't bump me. They, they pulled on the power of God. And the power of God came through him and healed the woman. Okay, and then we see two other instances in the scriptures where people just went up and touched him and got healed. So Jesus himself wasn't doing the healing. and He wasn't even participating. Other than being the vessel of God's love and power, and they had faith that God would heal through him, Jesus was not even participating in many, many people's healings. So we have in the scriptures, we have over 20 instances in the scripture of describing Jesus healing crowds of people. And then I think we have 12 or 14 descriptions of Jesus healing individuals throughout the four Gospels. Most of the people that Jesus healed came to him in his meetings and they got healed. So of the thousands and thousands that he healed, most of them came to Jesus or somebody brought them to Jesus to get healed. We have instances, for example, the story of the boy who's, who was dead at Nain and, and Jesus raised the widow. We have the story of in John chapter 5 of the man at the pool of Bethesda um, where 
they didn't even know who it was when he came in there. There was no faith in anybody's part. Certainly in the story of raising of Lazarus, there seems to be no part of faith on anyone raising, being raised from the dead that they believed that, it was, that Jesus was the one who could even do it. I mean, they, they, they didn't know who Jesus was. Um, if you remember, Martha goes, if you'd been here, he wouldn't have died, but we're not expecting you to raise him from the dead now. He's, it's done, right? Jesus says, if you believe... And we see many times Jesus talking about faith. Well, the faith that Jesus wanted most for people to know was not faith that Jesus could heal, but was faith that God was healing through Jesus. The Pharisees made a point of putting Jesus on the cross because they claimed he wasn't from God. It, he was healing the people himself. Or they said he had a demon who was healing him. But they wouldn't acknowledge that God was healing through Jesus. So the faith that Jesus was looking for for everybody was do you realize that it's Father God healing through me? Right? And so here it is in, in John 14. He's going,